ծանցության եւ ծանր պահերին քեզ եմ հիշում դույմ վահանես իսկ ես քովկան հաղթանակի Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you today to share these few moments together. Let's begin as we always do by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and say amen. Well, we are in the period of Advent as we prepare for the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now we say these words very casually, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we pin it to certain dates. December 25th, January 6th. Of course, we're not preparing for his birth. We're preparing for his birth not in a Bethlehem but in our lives, in our souls, in our spirits. That's what I want to talk to you about today. The combination of body, soul and mind, of spirit, how it all comes together. Because here in our diocese over the past few weeks, we've been honoring and celebrating the achievements of unique individuals. Most notably, last week we had an ecumenical service where we honored the people at the Seventh Day Adventist Hospital. Now this is a different denomination of Christianity and it it is a bold move on the part of the diocese and of course his eminence our primate to single out this venture because it's not about just their faith but the action of their faith how their faith is put into action and of course we're talking about the Adventist Hospital which is a very big hospital here in the Glendale area treating people of all kinds of illnesses and disease and their their motto the the program under which they operate is putting together the body the soul and the mind Well, of course, this is what Christianity is all about. When Jesus came to heal, he did not just heal the body, but what was so important for him? He says, "You are freed of your sins." You know, that 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 spirit, that soul is also in in need of healing. And so it's not just the body venture, but the body, the soul and the mind work together. Last week for instance our diocese honored Dr. Lee. He is one of the physicians at Los Angeles Children's Hospital. And as you know uh, he is a prominent physician who went to Armenia and he treated young children, premature babies, infants who were susceptible to blindness. Not only did he treat them but he he trained the new generation of physicians on how to treat. And so all of a sudden we see that our diocese is honoring someone like this and it's easy for us to stand back and say oh the diocese is a church why are you honoring people like that because it's an opportunity for all of us to look at these lives and here's an important thing why do we do this so that we can hold them as examples for our imitation You see there's a lot of people in life who give of themselves who are vested with talents as each and every one of us have our own talents our unique talents but what is the challenge that Christ puts us to to use those talents for others and so when you find a person like a doctor lee or you find a group of people like glendale adventist hospital and who are putting their talents for the benefit of others it's important as a church for us to look at them and say here are lives that we need to emulate imitate these are no different than the saints now don't get me wrong don't say oh father vaskins naming these people as saints no i'm not what i'm saying is the purpose of saints in our lives is not to worship them but to use them as the examples of our faith and so too around us there are people who live lives that are worthy of our imitation. Now we are preparing. We're in this period of Hisnag. In the Armenian Church we call this period of Advent Hisnag comes from the word Hisun, which is 50 days, 50 days before the Christmas feast. We are preparing ourselves to allow Christ to come into our lives. Do you remember the story of Christmas? Jesus comes into this world that is not prepared for him. Mary and Joseph the two saints who bring Christ to Bethlehem what happens they go door to door and there is no room in the inn well that inn of course is symbolic of our lives today isn't it 
Each of us, we need to make the room in our lives for Christ to find a place. Well, you could think of yourself as the innkeeper. You could think of your body as that inn where Christ wants to come in. You have to prepare it. Your soul has to be prepared. And what happened at that inn, that, that Christmas Eve, as St. Mary and St. Joseph went to, from door to door? There was no room at the inn. And so they had to go out into the stable. And that's where our Lord and Savior was born in a manger. Do you want Christ to be born in a manger today? Or do you want him to be born in your life? Well, we're giving you this opportunity to prepare your life. Prepare ourselves for Christ's coming, for Christ to be born in our lives. Each of these opportunities are, are, are only that, are, are times in our lives where we open ourselves up. Sure, Christ should be born in your life every single day. Christ should exist in your life every single day. But what happens is when we have an opportunity at like Christmas, it's an opportunity where the entire world is focusing in. And just like the church gives us opportunities by focusing in on, say, a hospital or on Dr. Lee, we too have to take advantage of these opportunities and say that on Christmas Day, we have this, this celebration, this celebration of Christ being born. Let's take advantage of that. Let's tell our friends that Christ is born. But it's not just something that happens in Bethlehem, but something that happens in our lives. Christ comes to the door and he says, is there room for me in this inn? Well, 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem, there was no room. What if he came to your life right now? What would you say? I'm sorry. I'm so filled up with anger. I'm so filled up with hostility. I have so many cares and stress in the world. I cannot deal. There is no more place to put Christ in my life. Or do you use this period of time to adjust yourself? to look at the talents that you have. How are you using those talents? Where do you fit in into the big plan of God's plan, of this world's plan? And how do you function? So that when Christ comes to your door, Christ comes to your life, you say, there is room in the inn. There is room in my heart. There is room in my soul. There is room in my life for Christ. Each of these are this word called opportunity. Each of these events, whether we commemorate and we applaud the work of a physician or whether you come on bended knees into a church and make your sign of the cross and dedicate yourself to God's work. These are all opportunities for all of us to take some moment, a moment of introspection, of look within and find ourselves, how do we fit in to God's beautiful life? the life that he has given to us. This is the period of Hisnag, of Advent, the preparatory period. Just like Great Lent is the preparation to Easter, this is the preparatory period to Christmas. I want to leave you today with this scriptural passage, which comes to us from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 12. From the, Lord's of our, from the word of our Lord Jesus Christ, he says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God's giving us the kingdom. It's his pleasure to give us the kingdom. You and I have been invited to that kingdom. We've been invited to partake in that kingdom. He says, sell your possessions and give alms. Provide yourselves with purses that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And I leave you with these words, to take an inventory of your life, of your treasures, of your talents, and look at your talents and see where is your heart. Is there room in your treasure chest for the greatest treasure that's coming? Do you find a place in your life where it will not be destroyed? Do you, have a, do you have such a place? We all do. God has given it to us. He said it is his pleasure that we participate in the kingdom. Take advantage of this beautiful period as we prepare for Christmas so that when on Christmas Day Christ comes into the world, we know that he has not come into a blank world. He has come into the most precious world that he has set up, our lives. And we take advantage 
of that beautiful gift that God has given us. I look forward to continuing this conversation with you to next week. Until then, I remind you in all things, give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.